Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at crimps and crimping. Now, uh, someone did actually make a comment about this in relation to the uh, RCBOs, and uh, that's the way if the uh, say a lead was too short, or in fact if it was too long, if you could uh, say cut off the end and uh, then obviously use that rather than having the massive excess of wire trailing around. And the answer is yes, you can. But uh, there are a couple of things to be aware of if you're going to be doing that. Now here we have an RCBO, which is the uh, circuit breaker and RCD combined into a single unit. And in common with most of the single pole versions of these, the neutral connection is on this separate lead. So line goes in at the bottom, and then the neutral is uh, on this uh, black lead in this case. Circuit wiring on the line and neutral connects at the top. Now have a look at the end of the wire for the neutral here. You see that uh, it's actually been sort of welded or uh, moulded into a single solid piece. And this is done because the wires on these typically have a very large number of fine strands inside. So if it wasn't fixed together like this, you'd have, uh, say, many dozens of strands all trying to fix under a single screw. That might not uh, give a very good connection. So hence the manufacturer obviously sort of uh, welds this together in some fashion. So it's essentially just one conductor that you're tightening the screw down onto. But of course, the problem is if you then uh, thought, well, this lead is too long or something, and uh, cut the end off. When you come to actually strip the wire underneath, you'll then find that you've got a considerable number of these very fine strands. So if you attempted then to screw down onto this, you can see there that uh, it's going to be rather poor connection because all these strands will basically sort of fan out and basically make it very difficult to get a decent tightened screw down onto that. That's why they generally recommend that you do not cut the end off of the lead. So have we in fact just ruined this RCBO? Well, of course the answer is no, because we can obviously do something about the end of this to uh, avoid this problem of these fine strands spreading out everywhere. Now the way to uh, fix those ends up properly is to use something like these. Now uh, these are cord end terminals, or some sort of bootlace ferrules as they're called, because the uh, end of it, once it's on, looks like you would have on the end of a shoelace or something. And they're available in a vast variety of sizes and different types. Uh, these are basically just a single hollow tube of metal, and these have an insulating plastic piece at the bottom. And we've got various different sizes here. The colour of these indicates the size of the actual metal tube. It's not there to uh, match up with the colour of the wires. And there are several different colour coding schemes as well, just to add to confusion. So. In the case of these, these are actually a French colour coding scheme. There are others as well, so uh, just because it happens to be orange doesn't necessarily mean it's a specific size, so uh, you do need to uh, stick with the particular size or colour system that you're using. Getting those mixed up could be a bit of a disaster. And as well as these with the insulated parts, you can also get things like these, which are basically the same, except they don't have that insulating part. It's simply the uh, metal tube on its own. And these are uh, some fairly small ones, but nevertheless it's pretty much the same, just a uh, hollow metal tube that the wire is placed into. Now in the case of our RCBO, which we just hacked the uh, end of the lead off, rather than having the uh, horrible wires splaying out everywhere, what we want to do is to take one of our end terminals here and fix that to the end of the conductor. And it just happens in the case of this particular wire, it's the orange terminal that we need. And again, you want to just cut the end so it's a similar length to the actual terminal itself. Now, in terms of actually fixing these things, the question of just stripping the wire to the appropriate length, which will match the uh, particular terminal that you have. And uh, then that would just be placed over the top like that. And it may be useful just to uh, twist that as it goes on so you don't actually sort of fold any wires back down here. So uh, that's sort of placed on the end there. And again, you want the end so that the wires basically reach the end of the metal tube part. Now, there are some doubtful suppliers who suggest you can just put that on and then shove this into the terminal in the consumer unit and tighten down the screw onto that, and that will do just fine. But uh, unfortunately, that's not correct at all. What you need to do is to use a crimping tool to press these and actually form them onto the wire so that they can't fall off. Now, there are several types of crimping tool available. The uh, cheapo matic variety, which I don't have here, but uh, here's a picture of one. Pretty much those are hopeless, and uh, the problem with those is there's no way of controlling the amount of force that's applied. They're literally press and hope, so maybe you applied enough force, or maybe you didn't. 
sort of tool you want to be using is something along the lines of this here, which uh, has the uh, jaws here where the actual terminal will fit, and has a ratchet inside so that uh, as you uh, squeeze the thing, obviously put your terminal here, as you squeeze it, once you've started to close it, it won't actually open until you've managed to close it all the way down, and therefore you know that the jaw is fully closed, and then on the final click it will release, and then you can obviously remove the item from the end. So in the case of our, uh, our CBO here, we've uh, put the uh, terminal there, just placed it over the top, and you can see the wires inside are pretty much up to the end of that. Then it's a question of taking the uh, tool here, and this particular one has numbered jaws, so uh, just select the appropriate jaw that's required. And in the case of this one, it's actually jaw number four, which is the one at the end on the left side. And then it's a question of taking the uh, particular pin here and placing it in the jaw, and you'll see that the uh, thing will just fit in like that. And then the piece on the other side is what will actually compress that in place. So we'll uh, put that in jaw number four, close down, And then we'll just crimp that close, and you'll see that it's actually deformed the thing and reduced the size of the space inside. And then that will release from the tool. And then we'll see on the side here that there's these uh, indents there, which essentially is what's holding it on the end. And now you can't actually pull that off at the end, and in fact you can put a substantial amount of force on that. The fact is that's not going to be coming off there without actually breaking the cable. And now you can place that into your consumer unit or whatever other fixing you have, and then you've got a solid piece of metal there. Also, it's going to give a much better connection all those thin strands flapping about everywhere. So here's another example. This is a piece of three-core flex, and the sort of thing you say might fit into a plug or other fixture. And in many cases, you can actually put these uh, fairly thin wires into the terminal, because uh, in a plug or something, for example, it's actually designed to take these uh, small size wires anyhow, unlike a consumer unit, which of course will have a fairly large size terminal, not really suited to fine wires. But nevertheless, you can fit actual uh, end terminals onto these as well. And again, this can either be the uh, insulated variety, such as this uh, blue one here, and if we wanted to fit this on, it's the same kind of deal. It may be helpful just to uh, lightly twist those so you can get them into the end of the terminal properly, and again, just uh, twist that and to work it down the conductor there. So as before, it's only a question of taking the uh, crimping tool and selecting the appropriate jaw, which in this case will be number one. Let's do this upside down, it will be a little uh, easier to see. So place it into the jaws there. Crimp down. And then as before, it's just uh, compressed the actual crimp there onto the end of the cord. And again, that's not going to be pulling off at the end there without actually breaking the cable. And you can put that into a terminal there, and again, it will be a screw to be biting down onto a solid metal piece rather than all of those individual strands. And uh, let's just see if we can actually remove it from here. Just place it in this stripper. And so the only way we can actually remove it, we've actually basically ripped half of the wire off of the end. The actual terminal itself, it still has a fair amount of the wire inside, and so we've actually broken the uh, bottom out completely. So done properly, these are sort of things that are not going to just fall off. You've basically got to destroy the thing to actually get it open, and so we've actually just ripped through the uh, copper strands there and completely broken and destroyed it. Now these are the uninsulated variety, and it's essentially the same thing, it's just a metal tube a slightly flared end, so it makes it easier to put the wires in. And again, it's sort of various sizes depending on the size of wire that you have. Now these are normally only used for the smaller sizes, so they don't have that bulk of the insulated plastic sticking out the bottom. But uh, principle is exactly the same, just strip the wires to the appropriate length, so the same length as the tube there. And then it's a question of just threading the metal tube over the wires inside and just pressing it down so it uh, covers the entire thing. And then as before, just get the crimping tool, putting it into the appropriately sized jaw, which again will be uh, number one in this case. Crimping down, and then we have the end of the wire there, properly crimped down so that, uh, again, that's not going to be coming off there. Basically contains all of those strands into a single unit.
Now, although those were quite small wires there, you can, of course, use the same things for much larger ones. So here we've got a piece of uh, twin and earth cable. This is six square millimetres. And again, these are stranded cores, although, of course, the individual strands are considerably bigger. And in many cases, you can just put these straight into the uh, socket terminals or whatever. But there may be instances where you uh, want to actually just put a crimp over the end so it's a bit tidier or even easier to fit in. And the size for this particular one are the uh, green ones. So, again, it's just place that over the end of the stripped conductor and then using the appropriate side tool which in this case is uh, drawer number five let's do a hint of uh, placing that over the actual pin there and then uh, just crimping that down of course the problem with large ones is that substantially more effort is required but uh, nevertheless uh, it does work so there we have the uh, crimp fitted to the end of the cable there and again that's uh, very securely fixed there that's not going to be coming off unless you actually physically uh, rip it off and break the actual cable and if you look at the end there hopefully you see that the wires have all been sort of compressed down so that there's no way that that's going to just fall off or come loose at any time so that's a look at uh, end terminals and of course that's only one type of uh, crimp available there are many hundreds of other types available for all kinds of different situations but uh, in terms of the uh, tools used certainly get the ones with the uh, ratchet action inside those sort of uh, press and hope things are basically useless and uh, these ratchet ones are not particularly expensive i mean you can buy uh, certain crimping tools which literally cost hundreds of pounds each but uh, generally not uh, particularly necessary unless you're uh, building an aircraft or working on some horrendously overpriced military installation but uh, until next time thanks for watching